I am a teacher, and as a teacher of children on the younger end of the schooling spectrum, I get asked some brilliant questions, some of which are difficult to answer, and some of which give me a feeling of, oh boy, I'm about to unleash chaos on your understanding of the world with this information. I must have been talking about fruit, as one does, and I mentioned that fruit is anything that has seeds in it, which is a rudimentary definition, I know, but for nine and 10 year olds, it's not a bad one. Students then started asking questions. So tomatoes are fruit? Yes. Pumpkins are fruits? Yes. Cucumbers are fruits? Yes. Then one student, clearly feeling challenged by this realization, said, I thought they were vegetables. And I had to answer, well, they are. Then seemingly outraged, this nine-year-old almost shouts at me, but it can't be a fruit and a vegetable. Folks often hear fruits and vegetables as binary. It's one or the other. An item of food from a plant has to fit into one of those boxes. Either it's a fruit or a vegetable, but that's not true. And for this young individual, this was an uncomfortable idea. Folks, this is a video in two parts. First, to answer the question of what's the difference between a fruit and a vegetable, and then, well, wait and see. First, let's get to the nuts and bolts of this. What's the difference between fruits and vegetables? That is, if there even is a difference. How can we categorize foods grown from plants? Well, for this, we need some definitions. A fruit, as defined by Britannica, is the fleshy or dry ripened ovary of a flowering plant, enclosing the seed or seeds. The ovary here is the botanical version of ovary. It's the female organ of a flower which contains ovules, which, when fertilized or pollinated, will turn into seeds. And the ovary will often swell to support this growth. Sometimes it turns into a fleshy fruit, sometimes it dries out. Sometimes it's sweet, which we often associate with fruit, like apples or apricots. Sometimes it isn't as sweet. So under this definition, there are lots of things that are fruits. There are things that you expect like apples and oranges, but there are also ones you may not. Yes, tomatoes, pumpkins and cucumbers, as well as other perhaps more surprising ones like peas. Though actually the peas we eat are the seeds. The pods, therefore, are the fruits, which is the same case for beans, corn is technically a fruit, and wheat. Yes, wheat. It's also a fruit. This definition is a very botanical one, a scientific one. We have categorized the ovaries that contain seeds as fruit, which means really anything that grows from a flower is a fruit. If a plant has flowers, it also has fruit. Dandelions, lilies, roses, all have fruits, but it doesn't mean we treat them all the same way, especially when it comes to thinking about them in culinary or food terms. We don't treat bananas and wheat the same when preparing them to eat. Wait, are bananas fruit if they're supposed to have seeds? Yes, we've domesticated bananas to have the remnants of seeds in them. Wild bananas are much seedier. But if fruits take up so much of the parts of a plant that we eat, ranging from corn to berries, what even is a vegetable? Well, I'm going to share two definitions, both from Britannica, because botanically speaking at least, a vegetable is any kind of plant life or plant product. Leaves are vegetables, roots are vegetables, bark is a vegetable, trees are vegetables, and fruits are vegetables. But when we talk about vegetables, we aren't talking about plants. This slightly narrow definition talks about vegetables as food from the edible portions of certain herbaceous plants, such as the roots, stems, leaves, flowers, fruits, or seeds. So carrots, as in the root, are vegetables, but not fruits. A carrot plant has fruit, but that comes from the flowers. Broccoli, the head of broccoli is a vegetable, as well as the flowers. Broccoli also has fruit and that comes from the flowers. We don't generally eat those. Potatoes are roots and they therefore are vegetables. Potatoes also have flowers and fruit, but we don't really eat them either. And well, fruits are vegetables, at least botanically and scientifically speaking. If we were to draw a Venn diagram of fruits and vegetables, the entire fruit section would be within the vegetable section because all fruits are vegetables, but not all vegetables are fruit. So to answer the question, what's the difference between a fruit and a vegetable? 
there may not be one. But a fruit is the part of a plant that comes from the ovary of a flower which contains seeds or seed where the vegetable is just any part of the plant we eat, which includes fruit. So when someone tells you to eat your fruits and vegetables, they could just say, eat your vegetables, because it would be just as technically true and more efficient. But that's not what I find interesting about all this. Let's move on to part two. Sometimes the way we define something and the way we treat something are two different things. And I think that this is where the surprise comes from. It's almost uncomfortable to think of some foods as the same as other foods when we treat them very differently in practice. Watermelon is a fruit. We put it out on fruit platters, we put it in smoothies and fruit salads. Zucchini is also a fruit, but we more regularly roast, fry or steam it. It would be extremely out of place in a fruit platter or a fruit salad. Even though it's a fruit, we treat it like it's a vegetable. This goes the other way as well. Carrot is a root, and we often treat it like a vegetable, unless we make carrot cake, in which case they're treated more like a fruit. Then there's rhubarb. We eat the stem of a rhubarb plant, so it's a vegetable, but it's almost exclusively used in sweet dishes, often alongside apples or strawberries. And while we're talking about definitions, are strawberries fruits? The seeds are on the outside. Well, yes, it's still made of the ovaries of a plant, but they aren't berries, at least botanically speaking. A berry is a single ovary fruit with a fleshy wall, like blueberries and are berries and cranberries are berries and avocados and tomatoes and eggplants. But strawberries are instead a multiple fruit made up of hundreds of tiny fruits that have combined together to look like one big one. Similarly, blackberries and raspberries are also multiple fruits and not true berries. Even though we treat strawberries, blackberries and raspberries as berries, putting them in pies and smoothies and so on, they're definitely fruits, but they're not berries. We better add a subcategory to fruit. <laughs> there we go. And there it is, categorization. This is where I think things get interesting and where the surprise or shock or even discomfort from realising that some things are actually defined as fruits even though we don't use them as such comes from. Let's think about concepts. The building blocks of human cognition are concepts. What we see, hear, interpret, remember, understand and talk about is crucially shaped by our concepts. A concept is something conceived in the mind. It's thoughts, notions, ideas, things. Everything you can think of is a concept. And what humans love to do, well, at least our brains do anyway, is categorise concepts. We organise things, we order things, we find things that are similar and things that are different. We compare and contrast, we sort, we make sense of things. Our brains just do it. We love to do it. And we see it everywhere. We love to put things in boxes. We have a whole science to it as well. Taxonomy is literally the science of categorising things. Occasionally, scientists will discuss and actually reclassify things because it turns out not to be exactly what we thought it was. We even try to categorise ourselves. We take personality tests and Buzzfeed quizzes and that's actually a whole can of worms that I'm not going to get into now, but I will discuss another time. We categorise things. It's a very human thing to do. One of the questions that children often ask is, what is your favourite whatever? Favourite colour, favourite food, or favourite place, or favourite animal, or favourite dinosaur? We order concepts, and then we pick our favourites out of those concepts. We do it from such a young age, and humans are just so good at it. So when it comes to challenging our conceptions, it can be uncomfortable. Trying to work out how this new piece of information fits into our already existing understanding of the world can be uncomfortable and hard, frankly. Learning that some things that we thought of as vegetables are actually fruits is challenging. Then learning that actually all fruits are vegetables just feels a bit weird. But then also moving on and realizing that we still use many fruits like vegetables and many vegetables like fruits. Well, it's all pretty complex. Yes, there are definitions, but 
things don't always act in ways we would expect them to based on those definitions. And I think that's pretty cool. Humans are really good at categorizing things and it's hard to fit information that challenges our view of the world into our minds. It's work, but I think the work is worth it because we come away not just by having a greater sense of what is right, but with a greater appreciation for the complexities of the world around us. The world is wonderful and complex. It's a place full of things that don't act like other things that we've categorised them with. And I think that's kind of beautiful. We categorise things because that's how we make sense of the world. But the world doesn't really care about our sense of organisation. It's messy and beautiful and that's wonderful. I think it's important to change our understanding of the world as new information comes our way. It's important to change the way we conceptualise things as we learn more things about them. Because after all, the only people who don't change are the dead ones. All fruits are vegetables, but not all vegetables are fruit. And we love to categorise things. If you enjoyed this video, there might be some others in that category. And I encourage you to check out my other videos and subscribe to That's Pretty Cool for more. I love to delve into topics and questions that fill me with a sense of curiosity and wonder. If you want to do any further reading on anything from this video, feel free to check out the resources I use. There's a link to them in the document in the description below. Thanks again for watching. Take care, stay curious, and I'll see you next time.